really, really, really like that a lot. <laughs> I'm here at Martin Guitar. Yeah, it's me Chris too. Martin, this is amazing. Thank yeah. you for joining me. We're opening the Custom Shop Experience Center. Which I love. It's blown me away. And I'd cool? love to grab a video of that before I go as well. Yeah. But while yes. you're here, yes. I did do a video last week on the HD28, okay. but I haven't played it. Now I've played it. I've got some footage I'll be playing oh, it, which I'll put into this video. Yeah. But can you tell us some more about it, please? So you asked about the 728. So I need to say that many years ago, I, I, I traveled the world promoting the Martin guitar. And only because when Craig and I went to Japan in the spring, it kind of came back around. So I'm younger, I go to Japan, and we go to a bluegrass club, which I actually walked by when Craig and I were there in the Ginza recently. And I saw these Japanese gentlemen playing their Martin Dreadnoughts, and I thought, would it be appropriate to have a dreadnought that was more comfortable if they weren't your size. They were my size. I have a small. Five. But I do like small guitars. Okay. Right. <laughs> so back then it was difficult to make new guitars. The fixturing, the tooling was a challenge. So we make the 728 and it was it was okay. It never really got traction. And the thing I remember is I, I take it back to Japan a year later and I'm so happy, like, okay, we've designed a smaller dreadnought for a smaller customer. And I'm, I'm small, so I, it, it wasn't about the Japanese player, it was about people that aren't, how tall are you? Six five. Yeah, I'm five nine and I'm tall, but do you think of someone who's five five or five foot? You watch them climb over the dreadnought. And Craig and I talked about this and I'm so excited. We go to Japan, I've got a new model, what is it? And I open the case and they're like, what is that? I said, it's a 728, it's perfect for your market. And they go, no it isn't, we want the real thing. Okay, fine. So fast forward, I've become obsessed with the Hawaiian music craze. Not so much about the ukulele, which, hey, Martin's heyday with ukuleles were in the mid-20s. In fact, I read an article recently that said, it could be said that in the mid-1920s, Martin was a ukulele company that dabbled in guitars. More ukuleles than guitars, right? Yes. So I came across something that I bought at an auction, and I thought, that's a compelling shape. And I said, I recognize that shape because it's kind of like a Martin Dreadnought. And so I asked my colleague, Tim, what do you think about making a reproduction of this guitar I bought at an auction? He's like, yeah, we could, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like the Dreadnought Junior. I said, no, it isn't, Tim, because it's slope shouldered. It's not like a Dreadnought Junior. He goes, yeah, well, it's, it's like the, the CEO 7. I said, no. It's not like the CO7. He goes, it's like the 728. I said, no, it's not. So Tim does his thing. I go home and kind of retired. I come in, you know, when it's appropriate. So Mary, my assistant, says, hey, when you come in next Tuesday, Tim wants to show you something. So I come in, and Tim is either skeptical or wildly enthusiastic. So he's got a smile on his face. I'm like, that's a good thing. Tim, what do you have? And he shows me this guitar. And he goes, you know what? It seems to work. So this is a guitar to honor that point in time when musicians were looking for bigger, louder guitars. We Now we can embrace the steel string. We have these the, the slope shoulder dreadnought shape. And you think about the big dreadnought and my friend Craig says, Chris, you know, I love Martin guitars. Craig's a, a rock and roller. He said, when I play rock, I stand up. When I play acoustic, I sit down. He said, sometimes when I play a dreadnought, my arm actually goes numb. So we make a reproduction of that guitar I bought at an auction in the style of the day, which would 
say, why wouldn't you make it out of koa wood? Because it was during the Hawaiian music craze, steel string, 14 fret neck. So it's not that big, wide, classic guitar neck with steel strings. Not a slot head, solid head, 14 fret. And Tim's like, you know, and I'm like, we should put some herringbone trim because we made a lot of Hawaiian guitars. First of all, for distributors and dealers and later for us, we never did a square neck. We always had them with the Spanish neck. And then of course, a lot of ukuleles. And I, I gave the prototype to Craig and he's like, oh man, this is just so comfortable. I agree. So that to me, that's, that's the hook is if you, it, it has enough of a dreadnought-like sound, but it's more comfortable if you're sitting on your couch and you just want to play to yourself. And so I'm really excited about this guitar. Um, that's about all I know other than I do think, and I think this is important, that if the Hawaiian music craze had not caused artists to ask all of us who made guitars to make them bigger and louder, I'm not sure that the guitars that we rever in the 30s and 40s would even exist. These guitars, Martin and Gibson, J45, right, D28, they were not designed for country and bluegrass. They were designed for the Hawaiian music craze to allow the player to give a sound to the back of the audience. And that's when in the 30s, the country guys are like, I'm not sure about Hawaiian music, but boy, that really works for country music. Really interesting. And I just want to ask you then, is this now part of the standard series or is this a special edition? My hope is, and Tim made an interesting point. He said, Chris, there's the possibility that this more comfortable slope-shouldered 14-fret dreadnought will appeal to enough customers that we will have to tool up. And tooling and fixturing is a big deal. So this was a, an investment. The company invested in my idea that we should do this, that we may make one in Navajoa. And I saw a salesman's call report just recently. A customer said, that's really cool. Are you going to do a Koa top model? So I'm open to anything. This is not a limited edition. This is made here in Nazareth. This one is. This guitar. But, but it's not limited. Okay. It's not limited. And if it gets enough traction, I'm hoping my colleagues will say, Chris, we need to do this in Navajo also. It's a, it's a very comfortable guitar. That's, and it, it, you played it. And it has enough of a sound that it's like, this sounds good. Damn good. I just want to say, I'm 6'5", yeah. and I love the sound, I love the how comfortable it is. I, even if you're tall, it's still yeah. nice to have a comfortable guitar, and yeah, it does exactly. really sound great. Right. All right. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Look forward to seeing it in the stores, and yeah. see you next time. Bye-bye. Cheers. Very cool. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. yeah, I really do like it. It's fantastic.